All right, good evening. Welcome, this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Waterville City Council. There are agendas available on the table uh, near the entrance or online on the city's website. A public comment period is listed at the beginning of the agenda, which will allow up for up to 15 minutes for citizens to speak on topics that do not appear on tonight's agenda. Speakers do not have to be residents of Waterville and will be allowed up to three minutes to speak. Any in-person attendees wishing to speak during the public comment period are asked to sign up on the sign-up sheet located at the entrance. Uh, remote attendees are asked to raise their virtual hand if they wish to speak. Speakers will be alternated between citizens who are attending in person and those attending remotely. All in-person speakers must speak from the podium, provide their name and contact information. If more citizens wish to speak after the allotted 15 minute period has expired, a continuation of public comment period will be provided at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the agenda. Consent, ag item, uh, consent agenda items are routine items which are voted on in one motion and vote. And any un unfinished or new business items are voted on separately. Counselors who have questions or comments on an agenda item may speak uh, after being recognized by the mayor, after all counselors have had the opportunity to speak, questions and comments from the public will, be, will follow. Citizens may be recognized by the mayor and will be allowed to speak um, only once for up to three minutes per each agenda item. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right, first up, disclosure of conflict of interest. Any councils have any conflict of interest in any of the votes that they'll take tonight? Seeing none. Um, first up, the first thing that we need to do is, Council, I need to uh, please someone make a motion to take resolution 83 2024 out of war office. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you very much. Patty? Uh, no roll call is required. All in favor of taking that out of order? Six zero. Is there a motion to read items by title only? Yes. Can we get that, please? So moved. Seconded. Thank you. All those in favor? Resolution 83-2024, canvassing of votes and determination of the result of the Ward 5 special municipal election held on April 2nd, 2024. Move, move to adopt. Yeah. Second. Can there be a motion to amend to include the results? And I can read those. Uh, Kenneth Gagnon, 36 votes, blank zero. Total votes, 36. I'll move. Second. And the vote on the amendment, all those in favor? And can we move it as amended now? So moved. Second. And we're ready for a vote? Yes, ma'am. All those in favor? Six zero. Thank you. And Mr. Kenneth Gagnon, if you would please join me at the podium. I can administer the oath of office. I was hoping that 36 <laughs> people would show up. You could have got the 36 people to show up for this. Please you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Kenneth Gagnon. I, Kenneth Gagnon. Do swear, do swear that I will faithfully discharge that I will faithfully just discharge to the best of my abilities, to the best of my abilities, the duties incumbent upon me, the duties incumbent upon me as a duly elected member, as a duly elected member of the City of Waterville City Council, of the City of Waterville City Council. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Sir. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. All right. Now you're at the. I can join you? Head table, yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you may want to run in the other direction. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, as a result of our budget uh, workshop that we held starting at 5.30 today, we are, this meeting does, is flowing rather quickly. Is our folks online, are they ready for? We have Eric Netto online that I can promote to do the audit presentation. Yes, please. Uh, thank thank you. you very much.
Mr. Neto, can you hear us okay? Yes, I can. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. I'm going to share my screen here. <clears throat> Bear with me for one quick second here. Can everybody see that okay? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you for uh, having me tonight. My name is Eric Netto. I'm a partner with Nicholson Michel Netto. We are the auditors for the city of Waterville. And I'm here tonight to do a quick presentation of the fiscal year 23 audit uh, and go through some trend analysis for the, for the council. Yeah, I usually like to start by just reminding everybody um, the responsibility around the financial statements. So the, the financial statements of the city are the responsibility of management. Our responsibility as the auditor for the city is to express an opinion on the financial statements based on our audit. We conducted our audit in accordance with auditing standards generally accepted in the United States. And those standards provide reasonable assurance that, fi that the financials are free of material misstatement. And we have issued an unmodified opinion on the fiscal year 23 financial statements. That is a clean opinion for the city. Okay, the financial statements for the city, um, there's really three main components. Uh, the government-wide financial statements um, report financial, financial information on a full accrual basis. So we reflect capital assets, long-term debt, um, liabilities, and various other accruals. We also present in the financial statements fund financial statements. So your general fund, capital projects, special revenue. Um, fund financial statements are, a those are what, you know, the city generally will monitor throughout the year. They, they, re they report more on a modified accrual basis. Um, so you're not going to reflect capital assets or long-term debt. You're actually going to, if you buy a capital asset, you're going to expense it within the fund financial statements. When you pay down your debt, it's, it's an expenditure within the fund financial statements as opposed to reducing a liability on the government-wide level. And then within the financial statements, we also provide a reconciliation uh, between those two statements. So that's a quick kind of overview um, of the, the reporting mechanism for the financial statements for the city. Okay, these next several slides get into some trend information on some key areas for the city. So you can see here, um, this slide represents the taxes receivable liens uh, in the general fund that are outstanding at the end of the fiscal year. Um, so at the end of fiscal year 23, uh, the city was reporting just over 1.1 million of outstanding taxes receivable. That was a, about a $70,000 increase over the prior year. And it's just slightly above average over the last five years, which is the last five year average about 1.1 million. So you can see fairly consistent um, since fiscal year 20. This next slide shows the property tax collection rate for the city um, for fiscal year 23. The property tax collection rate was about 96%. And you can see that again, fiscal year 21, 22, 23, those percentages have been fairly consistent. A little bit of a spike there in 2020. Uh, collections were a little bit higher than normal, um, but the last three years have certainly been consistent. This next slide shows um, the city's uh, mill rate uh, over the last several years. So we're auditing fiscal year 23, uh, the mill rate for this, this past fiscal year for the audit. Um, the audit period was 25.85. Um, the mill rate for the next budget period, uh, 23.24, uh, the next period we're gonna audit, 
dropped to 1990, um, and that reduction was primarily a result of revaluation. So again, the audit period that we're uh, providing financial statements for, the mill rate was 2585. Uh, the next audit will cover the mill rate, that's 1990. This next slide shows your long-term debt levels over the last several years. Um, long-term debt at the end of fiscal year 23 was about 22.8 million. Again, as we talked about earlier, that outstanding balance is reported as a liability on the government-wide financial statements for the city. Payments, uh, principal payments and interest are recorded as an expenditure um, in the fund financial statements. Uh, the current year decrease in bonds and notes payable was approximately two and a half million due to your regularly scheduled bond principal payments. There were no new bonds issued in fiscal year 23. Um, you can see on this slide that in fiscal year 20, 21, and 22, there were increases in the long-term debt levels. So you had new bond issues in each of those fiscal years. So no bond issue in fiscal year 23, regularly scheduled bond principal payments of about two and a half million. Okay, these next three or four slides deal specifically with fund balance. Uh, so at the end of fiscal year 23, um, the city's uh, general fund balance for the city and school combined uh, was about 13.2 million. That was an increase of approximately 1.7 million over fiscal year 22. Okay, this slide right here uh, reports, uh, illustrates the, the city's unassigned fund balance, uh, which I know is an important metric uh, for management and, and for the council, particularly as you're getting into uh, your budget season. Uh, the unassigned fund balance for the city at the end of fiscal year 23 was approximately nine and a half million. Uh, and a portion of the city's general fund balance that was assigned to the fiscal year 24 budget uh, was $2 million. This slide right here uh, illustrates um, the school general fund balance. Uh, the general fund balance for the school at the end of fiscal year 23 was about 1.58 million. That was a decrease of 87,000 over the prior year. I think it's worth noting here that despite the decrease overall in fund balance, uh, the school had budgeted to utilize about $300,000 of their fund balance during the fiscal year 23 budget period. Uh, the school had an overall favorable budget to actual variance of about 213,000. So they didn't utilize all of their budgeted fund balance uh, in fiscal year 23. We do conduct a separate audit engagement for the city, uh, for the school, and we issue a separate financial statement for the school department as well. Okay, fund balance policy calculation. So the city does have a policy where it will maintain an unassigned fund balance of at least 12%. Um, and that, that calculation is determined by taking the unassigned fund balances uh, for the city and dividing that by the applicable fiscal year general fund expenditures. Okay, so earlier we looked at the, the unassigned fund balance for the city had, had increased approximately 1.7 million uh, in fiscal year 23 as a percentage of the general fund expenditures uh, in the current year, you're at 20.9%, uh, which is well above policy. Um, in the prior year, you were at 19.35%. Okay, so this next slide um, illustrates fund balance utilization. So the blue, the blue bar represents what the city budgeted to utilize uh, for fund balance during the fiscal year. The red bar would indicate how much of that budgeted fund balance was actually used. 
ok so the last for the last six years the city has budgeted to utilize fund balance during the year but has not had to utilize it so each of those years they've actually added to their fund balance the last year where a portion of the fund balance was actually utilized in the budget period was fiscal year 17 and as I mentioned earlier for fiscal year 24 the city budget is budgeting to use 2 million of its fund balance for fiscal year 23 they had budgeted to use about just under 2.1 million so again we didn't there were positive budget results where we didn't you the city didn't utilize any of its budgeted fund balance and actually you added 1.7 million to your overall fund balance for the year ok so some very positive trend information looking at property tax receivable long term debt fund balance again the city is in a very a very good financial situation you know not utilizing fund balance budgeted fund balance for the past six years I think continues to allow you to look at that and monitor that as you're considering your budgets for this coming fiscal year and beyond that the last slide I like to go through a few required communications with the council and then I'll open it up for questions if there are any I do like to mention that there were no difficulties in dealing with city and school management in performing and completing the audit Christina and her team and Paul and her team do a great job addressing questions responding to information requests I really appreciate the help and assistance that the school department and the city finance department provided to us during the audit the audit is of a municipal entity can be you know it's a tough process but they go through it very professionally and we've worked together for quite a while so there's good communication back and forth there were no disagreements between the auditors and management about any financial accounting reporting or auditing matters we discuss a number of things throughout the audit obviously we're testing transactions controls and doing our substantive work but there's a lot of discussion and evaluation and determination as to you know when we're producing and auditing and finalizing a financial statement so again a lot of those conversations just happen within the normal scope of our audit engagement we will be making certain recommendations to the city for fiscal year 23 primarily around financial reporting and some year and close procedures but overall the city and the school department have good internal control structure good segregation of duties and from the results of our testing those procedures are in place and operating effectively all right so that concludes our presentation if anybody has any questions I'd be happy to to answer them Mr. Mayor yes Eric long-term debt how do we compare with our peers out there other sizable communities of our size and do you happen to know just maybe offhand how we kind of compare because I think we're actually in a fairly good position at 22 23 million probably compared to some of our peers out there is that true yeah I would say you're at the you're comparable but also probably a little bit lower as far as your debt levels and you're well within the statutory requirements that the state requires which is 15% of the city's valuation so yeah I think the debt load right now is adequate and I think the you know that covering the debt service which is you know part of your budgeting process hasn't been an issue either at this point any other counselors have any questions so what I'm wondering is as as the fund balance grows each year and I know that it is tied to the expenditures but is there any reason 
to, uh, would we be um, still within good fiscal practice to consider lowering the amount of money in the debt, um, sorry, in the, in the UFB? So I'm, and particularly I'm thinking about the fact that uh, for many, many years we haven't utilized any of the funds that we're, we're drawing in. Um, yeah, I, to me, I think you, you want to look at, um, the policy of, of the city, right? So you have a 12%, um, undesignated, unassigned fund balance policy, and you're well above that. So, um, I think it's a, it's certainly a discussion as far as how much of that you're utilizing and how much, how close, how much closer you get, uh, to the 12%. Um, from a, from an auditing perspective, um, and a financial reporting perspective, really there's no concern from my, from my end. Um, that's more of an internal management council discussion as far as how you want to utilize that fund balance for a particular purpose, whether it's to, um, you know, manage your mill rate or, um, you know, invest in other projects. So, you know, transferring certain funds out of general fund into capital projects, for example. I and mean, there's a number of different things and avenues that the city can take um, to utilize those, that unassigned fund balance. I think and generally over the last six, seven years, um, it's primarily been utilized uh, to control the mill rate. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing I'll mention about, you know, uh, an un unassigned fund balance policy is, is some municipalities don't have a designated policy. Um, you know, they monitor unassigned fund balance because it's a very important metric for, for budgeting purposes and other, other reporting. But, um, the fact that the city has, um, an approved policy that kind of keeps you, keeps you on your toes, keeps you in track. Um, but I, Rebecca, I think it's a great, a great point to make that, you know, it's been since fiscal year 17, that was the last time that you, you utilize some of that fund balance, um, uh, designation. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, there's been a, a fairly steady increase in your unassigned fund balance, certainly over the last six years. Okay. Any other counselors? Eric, thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Have a good night. All right. Moving on, we are at where? The manager report. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize our fire chief, Sean Essor, who has been named fire chief of the year by the Maine Fire Chiefs Association. Uh, he accepted an award at Sunday River last week, so I uh, just want to publicly congratulate uh, Chief Essor uh, for this achievement. Um, it's a big deal. Um, we want to recognize him and thank him for all of his uh, service and dedication uh, to the city of Waterville. So thank you, Sean, and a well-deserved award. So. Thank you. Uh, a reminder, our comprehensive plan survey is now uh, available. We have received over 200 responses already. Um, residents can complete the survey electronically or paper copies are available at select locations um, around the city, including City Hall, at the library, at the Muskie Center. Thank you, Paula, for bringing those over. Um, and we're encouraging all uh, Waterville residents, of course, to participate, to fill out the survey. It's not that long. It just takes a few minutes. Um, but your feedback is very important to us. And those uh, survey responses are due back um, by May 3rd. Uh, as you probably know, besides a snowstorm, there's an eclipse coming up. So uh, we have actually been um, meeting and talking and planning of how to handle a, a large influx of visitors coming into our region, um, probably going a little bit north of here, but I know the hotels are already about totally booked and we're anticipating a lot of traffic coming to town. Um, and uh, our, our police and communications center handles um, calls from a larger region than just uh, Waterville. So we are, we are anticipating that. Um, Chiefs Essor and Bonnie are well prepared uh, and ready to handle anything that comes with this uh, once in, I guess, a lifetime eclipse. So uh, just rest assured we have been talking and planning um, for the influx of visitors uh, coming for the April 8th eclipse. 
Um, city managers open office hours. Um, my next event will be on April 22nd, 3.30 to 5.30. Uh, location uh, still to be announced. We are scouting out places, hopefully in the north end, maybe in wards one or two, um, for me to uh, hold this session. We were in the south end last month, as you know, at the Muskie Center. We're gonna be back there again. Um, we're talking to them, I believe, for our June session back uh, in the South End. And a reminder, anyone that, that may have a location to offer, please let me know. We're trying to get around the city uh, into all the wards as much, much as possible. So if you have any ideas, please, please let me know. Uh, I want to welcome a new business downtown. Uh, Sandy Compton um, has set up shop as uh, New Beginnings 2 uh, downtown. This is what most people know as the old Kenneset space. You'll notice the Kenneset sign has now disappeared. Um, Sandy will be getting um, her sign up uh, shortly, so we want to recognize her. Uh, the mayor and I were at the ribbon cutting uh, last week, so um, welcome, Sandy. Welcome, New Beginnings 2. Uh, another addition to our downtown. We wish them much success uh, and um, many years ahead uh, in our downtown and part of our community. So thank you. Um, lastly, I just want a, another plug for our mass notification system. Numbers are slowly but surely uh, increasing. So please uh, enroll. You know, we have, you know, have a snowstorm tomorrow, for example. This is a great way to get information from the city alerts. Uh, parking bans, all of that good stuff. Um, you can sign up for a number of different things and you can kind of pick and choose what you'd like to receive. So it's a really great system. Um, please go to waterville-me.myfreealerts.com uh, to sign up. There's also a QR code on many um, advertisements around. Uh, lastly, I just want to mention the storm tomorrow. Um, like many uh, community schools and everyone else across the state, we are already calling tomorrow. Uh, for a snow day, City Hall will be closed um, tomorrow, April 4th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, council comments or committee reports. Any councilors have a, any comments or committee reports to talk about tonight? Okay. okay. Council Keepak? Uh, <clears throat> the Resiliency Committee uh, met yesterday and um, to remind folks, we had uh, submitted the community action grant as part of the Resiliency Partnership, uh, which is a state grant for 50K. And we began uh, talking about um, a new grant opportunity. Uh, it's a federal grant that was part of the um, bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, 50, no, $500 million has been released as part of what's called the Renew America's Schools Grant. That grant opened on uh, March 20th. Um, we have uh, until the middle of June, I think the 14th, to submit um, a package for the first round. There are three phases of this grant. I'm pretty, op I'm, it's a pretty exciting uh, opportunity. The first phase of this grant is a three hundred thousand uh, dollar award for uh, that would go uh, towards uh, planning, uh, strategic planning. The second phase, and, and once you get the prize round, then it's uh, onto two more phases of negotiations with the feds, the federal government. Uh, the, the first of those two rounds would be five hundred thousand dollars for uh, a thorough energy audit of uh, the Waterville schools. And then uh, the, the last round of negotiations would be uh, $7 million uh, for all kinds of things like, you know, energy efficiency, uh, HVAC improvements in the schools, um, electric transportation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's whatever we, we deem the priorities uh, for the city. One of the, um, one of the uh, hurdles for the grant is it requires the formation of a um, partnership um, with uh, uh, a coalition, uh, and probably this will be some other school district. Um, so we're looking uh, right now. Um, it'll have to be. It's a it's a shortened time window for this, but we're looking for um, a sister community around us that we could partner with not just a, a, a community that has need, but one that actually has capacity to help us manage the grant because it would be a significant, uh, it would be a significant, um, it needs a significant resource in terms of implementation and, and reporting, et cetera. But um, that's what we're working on there. We also, uh, I 
um, attended a uh, information session for that grant uh, a couple hours and got a lot of got a lot of information for us. I also attended the um, main sustainability conference last Thursday, uh, 500 people, the main sustainability and water conference. Um, and that was uh, really interesting. I learned about a lot of other grant opportunities that I'm hoping to uh, develop through the resiliency committee. Um, and I was also able to present some data that we've been working on uh, in terms of brown tail moth in collaboration with the police department. They helped us and um, the public works department. So um, I look forward to sharing uh, some of that data with the public <coughs> works department. Um, one of the, uh, I'll give you one of the takeaways uh, of that work is uh, in the month of July when those moths are uh, adults, one thing that the city can do to help mitigate the problem is to, as much as possible, turn lights off, particularly ones that are adjacent to trees between like 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. and in locations that you can't uh, have dark, go dark, uh, to have LEDs that are yellow. Yellow LEDs are, uh, are actually a little bit repellent to the, to the moths. So there are some very low cost ways that, that we can uh, continue to protect the city of, of Waterville. So, Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Council Green. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, mention an event that's happening on Friday in between the snowstorm and the eclipse. Um, it's a first Friday at downtown, and this will be the opening reception for Together, Hearing, Holding, Healing, Anecdotes and Inspirations. Um, this is a, a project that's been going on for months in Waterville, um, spearheaded by Peter Brune, who has been working with various communities in, in Waterville. Um, helping them create art and to articulate what community means to them. And he is pulling it all together actually this whole month. There will be four different events starting um, on Friday at the Ship Center um, with the opening reception. There'll be um, his art and also community art. And then there are three other events, April 15th, one to four, which will spotlight the South End and also efforts to create a recovery center in Waterville. April 19th from 3 to 6 p.m. is focused on how the arts, business, and community intersect. And April 27th will be kind of the grand finale with a lot of different community groups um, sharing uh, the ways that they're contributing to community well-being. So just a wonderful array of of events, and I'm sure we'll learn a lot about the people um, that we live with here in Waterville that we may not have known before. So, Thanks. that's it. Thank you very much. Council McCormick. Uh, I would like us to, it would behoove us as a council to ask Brian to invite Representative Schauberg to come before the council during a budget session to explain some of what the county's looking for. This increase is a large part of what is going to drive, what, a dollar seventy-five increase in our mill rate. It would be nice to have him show up and explain to us some of what's going on. Because I don't know what, besides jail, the county supplies to us, but we as a service center supply to the county. And that is gonna be a major hit that a whole lot of people in this town are not gonna be impressed with. I think it would behoove us to have our representative come before us and explain a few things. Noted. That's our county commissioner, correct? George yes. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, moving on to public comment. Again, this is the section of the agenda for citizens to speak on topics that are not on the, uh, on the agenda. Um, I will start recognizing the folks that have signed up thus far. Uh, Nancy? <coughs> I time myself. My comments are just under three minutes. <laughs> Love it. We'll keep I'm, you honest. Yep. I'm Nancy Sanford, uh, Ward 1, and I volunteer with Starfish Village. I wasn't at the March 
19th city council meeting, but have read the minutes and watched some parts of a number, a number of times. Here are some of my thoughts. One, how did Dave Gilman, Bill Mitchell, and Greg Perkins know that the issues they spoke of are caused by patrons of the lighthouse? Two, the soup kitchen has been on College Avenue for almost two years. Has there been an increase in crime in that two-year period? What are the statistics? If so, again, how do the property owners and p police know that it is due to the patrons of the so soup kitchen? <coughs> Three, I stopped by the soup kitchen to see the cameras myself. With two eyes on which I am having cataract surgery in May, I could see the images just fine. But this begs the question, so what? Why is it the responsibility of the lighthouse to police private property they do not own? I believe that to be a duty of the local police department. I'm a member of the Waterville Congregational Church. In the approximately four years since we moved to the Elm, I have been approached once, late last year, beginning of this year, by someone asking for money. An elderly woman on a Sunday morning when the lighthouse is not open. Five, there are cameras at the Elm. Perhaps there is something wrong with those cameras if they are not adequately showing what activity Bill Mitchell and the others spoke of. Perhaps rather than taking $2,000 from an organization whose mission is to feed people, which they do so successfully, he should pay for the evaluation of his camera system. Again, why is it the responsibility of the lighthouse to police property they do not own? Six, I agree with Rebecca. It is interesting that these concerns are coming up when the soup kitchen was asking for more money and other organizations which assist the most vulnerable people in our community were invited to apply for more opera money. Seven, the businesses ex expressing concern spoke of how much they support the mission of the lighthouse. If, there's, if that is true, why did they, they not go to the lighthouse and have a conversation? Even though it is not the responsibility of the lighthouse volunteers to, to police property they do not own, I believe it would have been a better way to approach their concerns. Thank you. Three seconds to spare. You're good, Nancy. <laughs> Patty, do we have anybody online wishing to make a public comment this evening? No, sir. Okay. Ms. Collar. Carla Cairn, I'm president of the board of directors for the Waterville Area Soup Kitchen. Um, I think the language that has been used around the soup kitchen as of late um, has had some effects, some negative effects. Um, we lost um, a group of very young and um, eager students from Mount Maurice. They will no longer be coming to the lighthouse um, to serve and learn about our most vulnerable members of our community. Um, that's, a, that's a blow to us. Um, it's almost as though the soup kitchen is the problem and we're not the problem. We were the solution. And the language that has been used here as of late is wrong. And if you have an issue as a business owner and you want to bring employees into your businesses to work, why don't you come and encourage them? Come and talk to our population about the effects that some of them, like 10%, are having on your businesses. Talk to them about that and how that affects the greater Waterville area. Tell them that we are employers. What can we do to help you gain the skills that you would need to come to work for us instead of pushing them away and pushing them out? That's the solution. And we're not going to find solutions until we learn to connect with one another. Um, we're not the problem. We're the solution, and we're trying really hard to mitigate some of the issues that we're having we have served over 300 meals a day each day this week. Sometimes we're down 
to maybe 200, sometimes it's 243. We are regularly over 300 meals a day as of late, and I've seen seven new faces today. And of those seven were three parents with children at home that can't make ends meet. The language that has been used has caused harm to the soup kitchen and to the 90% that are not the problem, but they're going to experience the consequences of it. Thank you. Thank you. Patty, again, I ask any other, anybody online at this point? No, sir. Thank you very much. Anyone else who didn't get the opportunity? Anna? Sorry, I was planning on being online, so. That's fine. Um, my name is Anna Holdener. I'm with the South End Neighborhood Association. Um, and we just have a, we're, spring is upon us, so we have a number of events that are coming up. Um, throughout the month of April, we'll be working on bikes. Um, we are hosting two bike repairs um, within the South End, as well as a bike swap in May. Um, and this, these are annual events uh, at, for those of us, those who don't know the South End Neighborhood Association. Um, we repair, collect, repair, and distribute bikes to not only the South End youth, but also um, if we have extra bikes that are in decent shape um, to, to distribute to kids throughout the, the Waterville area. So um, the first, our repairs will be April 6th and April 20th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. We are still looking for volunteers who know what they're doing, because um, I certainly do not. Um, I am the paperwork person. Um, but we, we will provide lunch to any volunteer um, who does come down to, to help us fix some bikes up. Um, and then our bike swap is um, scheduled for May 4th. Um, the first hour, 10 to 11, is scheduled specifically for South End residents. And then from 11 to 12, we open it up to youth um, throughout the Waterville area. Um, and it's usually a really good event. Um, we've been, I, that, I don't even offhand remember the number of, time, number of years that we've been putting on this event, but um, it's definitely one that's well received, not by just the South End kids, but by the entire community. Um, we'll also be doing Hitting the Streets for our annual South End Neighborhood Cleanup. Um, it happens to coincide with the city of Waterville's bulky waste. Um, but if you're interested in doing some cleaning up around parks and streets within the South End, helping us um, hit the trails, hit the cemetery, um, all those places, uh, we're always looking for help. Um, and we will be meeting on April 27th. April 27th, um, we usually meet about 9.30. Uh, no, just kidding. 8.30. 8 there we go. I knew that was wrong. Um, 8.30, uh, we usually go till noon, um, and then we have pizza lunch usually. So um, we're often joined up with Colby students, some local businesses, and folks from the neighborhood. So if you're looking to, to get involved, um, that would be great. Um, and can I make some comments as just me, myself, and not Senna? You have 20 seconds, you can do whatever you okay. want. Okay, so um, I as, am a regular volunteer over at the Soup Kitchen, um, and I have had a, a lot of opportunities to get to know the folks that are there. Um, and one of, the, one of the populations that goes there that people don't realize is the underhoused. It is not just people who are homeless that use the Soup Kitchen. It is people who are unable to make ends meet. They're unable to have a sense of community within their own building. And those, will, those folks will also be at risk of losing a very vital resource if anything happens to the soup kitchen. The soup kitchen wasn't, didn't come first. They're there because that's where the people were. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, Patty, again, I ask anyone online. Thank you. All right. Saying no other hands. All right, we will move on to uh, the consent agenda. Can I, is there a motion for passage of the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Thank you. All right. Um, let us take a quick peek here. Um, can we do, do you mind, please, and I apologize, um, can we make a motion to take Ordinance 77 2024? out of order and do that one first. 
Don't we have to vote on the consent agenda to approve the consent oh, yeah, agenda? That's, yeah. sorry. that's what I was thinking. All right. Yeah. All those in favor yeah. of approving the consent agenda? Thank you. Thank you. Seven in favor, zero opposed. Thank you, Councilor Finch. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Thank you. <laughs> All right, so now can we please? They're here. They were waited a really long time last time. So they're just simply, let's see if we can get that one taken care of. So you're requesting that we move Ordinance 77 2024 out of order and take it up? Correct. Now? Please. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll that move. sounds like a motion. Is there a second? Yeah, second. second. Okay. Um, yeah. Ordinance 77, 2024, amend the zoning map, 218 College Avenue. Move to adopt. Move to adopt. Second. Second. We didn't technically vote on taking yeah, it out of order. Say, like, listen, we just did this a second ago. We got a vote on the um, Correct. Uh, amendment to move Taking it out of order. Out All of those order. in favor? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now order 77, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now we're ready. Any discussion with regard to this? This was, um, I'm trying to find this on my sheet, sorry. Just to rezone uh, 218 College Ave uh, right. to CC, uh, CCC1 to allow for some housing in the property. So this is a second, a second vote of that ordinance. Any discussion? Just just to recap this item, the housing traditionally existed there, correct? And this is to make it <coughs> um, allow for it to conform. Okay. Thanks. We're gonna vote. This requires a roll call vote. Roll call vote. Thank Co you, Councilor Gilly. Yes. Councilor DeBrito? Yes. <coughs> Councilor Kleepak? Yep. Councilor Green? Yes. Councilor Gagnon? Yes. Councilor Finch? Yes. Councilor McCormick? Yes. The vote is seven in favor and zero opposed. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Moving on to Resolution 70 2024. Authorize the issuance of an outdoor dining permit and outdoor dining extension to Charles Jiggier doing business as Silver Street Tavern. Move to adopt. Second. All right, discussion. This was an item that was, sorry. Um, is there anyone here representing Silver Street Tavern? Mm -mm. Okay, um, they had come into the office and I explained the discussion that took place um, and they were uh, going to reach out to the, um, the owner of the property where the last unicorn was located to see if they could extend further down that way rather than take the whole street mm -hmm. width. They were also going to reach out to um, Don Plourd to inquire about the status of a lease or whatever with the, the Paragon shop. Um, but, and I explained to them that they really needed to be here to explain what was going on, um, but I don't see them here. And um, mm. it could be confusion that maybe they were trying to come last night mm -hmm. because it, you know, it's now a Wednesday meeting. So I'm not sure exactly, maybe that was a miscommunication on my part. So at this point, we don't have any further detail from them. So I guess it's up to the council whether you wanna. I'm just gonna add, I did speak with Don Ford and they are all set as far as needs for outdoor space, for outdoor dining. So that, that piece is satisfied. Okay. Um, and you also saw an email there with dimensions. There were some questions about measurements and dimensions. Um, you received that by email. So I did, I did speak with Don Ford. Uh, they are all set as far as outdoor dining across the street. So they're not gonna require space in the street? Okay. okay. So does that mean they're not gonna use the space that the unicorn, in front of where the unicorn used to be? <laughs> Well, it would sound based on what city manager Kainrath just explained that since now they don't have to make allowance for a lessee at the Paragon shop, that their initial request was to use the entire width of the street as they have in the past. Okay. So I would assume if that's the case, then they wouldn't <coughs> require spreading down the street 
to in front of the former last unicorn location. That's what I would assume. And this, this uh, request and the sketch that they submitted was exactly what they had done last year. So that's what's on the table currently. Hmm. Okay. I mean, if they want more space, they can come back and ask for more down the road. You got last unicorn not there anymore. You got Cancun is closed. He may decide he wants to use the whole sidewalk not the whole well, street, but the whole sidewalk. And, but initially, go with what he has, and if he wants or needs more, he can come before us. Yeah, I think <clears throat> it's just a matter of confirming what we're voting on, mm -hmm. because there was were some questions from last time. So, yep, I think the confirmation is that what they did last year is they want to use the entire width of the street in front of their building, right. and not to extend down further. But I think we're safe to safe to do that based on the conversation I had with the neighbors across the street. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Seven in favor, zero opposed. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to order 76, 2024. Approve use of ARPA funds to support various community partners. Move to adopt. Second. Okay. I'll open it up to council. any council discussion. Council Finch. Um, so we had a great discussion, you know, two weeks ago, so I'm not going to belabor anything this time around. I'm just going to um, offer... Um, two amendments, um, and the first one is requiring that all applicants um, who receive funding report back to City Council no later than April 1st of 2025, um, informing us of um, how they have <coughs> used or allocated the funds. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion on that amendment? <coughs> Seeing nothing, <coughs> can we get a vote on that amendment? Can you email that to me so I get the exact language? I think I get the, the gist of it, but yeah. I want to make sure that I have it exact. Yeah. Oh, is All there in favor? Seven in favor, zero opposed. Is there another amendment to offer? Uh, yes, the second amendment is for all of the Organizations that will receive fun, um, funding stipulating that the money must be spent in Waterville. And we have a second for that motion. I'll second. second. Okay. Any discussion with regard to that motion? Council Gang? Uh, I just question whether or not that's legal. Mm -hmm. Or constitutional. I, I wouldn't. Is that something Bill Lee could help us out with? For yeah, we, we, we could ask Bill Lee on yeah. that. Um, Would that require a table? He's not here tonight. We'd have to table it. And yep. Hey, Bill. Just, I think we could Um, maybe just to change your motion a little bit to say um, pending review or um, pending review by city attorney. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Legalities. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. then you can then if it is illegal, then you can proceed rather than coming back here. And then if it's not legal, it just dies. Or do we have to come back? If it's and not legal, it? then then yeah, that part of the motion I would think would die. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have it say that. Patty. <laughs> have it say that. Oh, that it's going to uh, be a lengthy okay. email from him to you. Pending <laughs> uh, legal review. review. Yep. Yeah. So was there a second to the amended motion? A second. Okay. Any I'm, other discussion on that amendment? Yeah. Councilor Green? Um, So 
So all of these organizations, except for one, are, are located in Waterville. Um, the other one has stated that it serves 33% of its, 33% uh, uh, of its um, clients are from Waterville. Um, I don't exactly know how we can enforce this. I, I mean, I think, you know, there, there is an expectation, of course, that these are Waterville organizations, they're serving people in Waterville, but, um, but some of them do serve people from other communities. So are we asking them to do some sort of monitoring to track who they're serving? For instance, at Educare, um, if some of the funds could only go to people who are residents of, of Waterville, it just seems a little onerous to me and, and really unnecessary. I concur. So. It would require uh, it, it would require separate funds, separate accounts, right? Yeah, that they're that they're that they're spending right. out of because it, you know this money couldn't just go into a general into a general funds because what's the, when that happens? What's to differentiate one dollar from another? Yeah, it's, it would require a lot of tracking on, on the part of the organization if they're really going to do that. And yeah, I just question. I mean, I'm fine to withdraw it because I also realize that it's kind of covered under Amendment 1 where we're going to get a reporting of what yep. they spent the money on. So I'm, I'm happy to withdraw it. Okay. Okay. Motion or amendment has been withdrawn. Any, any other discussion on the order 76-2024? We, we need to move it as amended now. Thank you. So moved. Second. Uh, can we get a, is that a? This is an order, so it does require a roll call vote. Okay. Uh, Councilor Gilley? Yes. Councilor DeBrito? Yes. Councilor Klepak? Yep. Councilor Green? Yes. Councilor Gagnon? No. Councilor Finch? Yes. Councilor McCormick? Yes. The vote is six in favor and one opposed. All right. Now moving it as amended. That was no, that's, no, correct. that's the amendment. Yep. Oh. No, that was <coughs> that's what we just did. I thought we yeah, that we was moved as amendment, amended. So that was moving it as amended. Right, and that was yeah. the vote on the order, the second vote. Yes. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to order 75 2024. Earmark remaining ARPA funds to housing initiative. Move to adopt. Second. second. Any discussion from the council with regard to this? So the total funds would be the 550,000, right? Is that, okay. Just making sure. Councilor Gagnon? You might have answered my question. Thank you. <laughs> so that's correct? Mm -hmm. Is that the correct amount once we do this? 550? 550-205-37. <clears throat> Fantastic, yep. thank you. Okay, can we get a, this is an order off, can we get a roll call on this one, please? Councilor Gilley? Yes. Councilor DeBrito? Yes. Councilor Klepak? Yep. Councilor Green? Yes. Councilor Gagnon? Yes. Councilor Finch? Yes. Councilor McCormick? Yes. The vote is seven in favor and zero opposed. Wonderful, thank you. All right, moving on to new business. Uh, resolution 81-2024. Authorizing the use of 2022 recreation bond funds. Move to that. Second. Thank you very much. Matt. How are you, sir? Okay. You can you can wherever you choose. Thank you. I trust everyone was able to um, review the documents. I'll be referring to this one a bit as I as I go through a few items with you. Um, so really happy to provide this update. I know that you know some of you may think it's overdue, um, but there were some circumstances outside of our control that have been uh, settled. So um, we weren't able to do, we did a lot of work in 2022, and that's illustrated in, in the memorandum. Um, weren't able to do too much last year, but we're very much looking forward to moving forward. It's not often that recreation um, has this type of funding. So we all wanna be very careful with how we spend the funds. So 
Um, I wanted to get into a bit more detail regarding the um, proposals that you see. Um, first, I'd like to let you know that the, for budget purposes, it's important that the city, city crews do as much of the pro proposed work as, as we can. Um, cost to hire private contractors to do earthwork or carpentry would make these projects four or five times higher in most cases. So we're going to want to take our time as best we can um, because we only have so many people and we do have other projects uh, citywide for both public <coughs> works and parks and recreation, including some of the vision plans, which we're also anxious to get started with. Um, and I'll remind you that because of the total bond issue in 21-22, um, it was under $5 million total, so there are no time restrictions for spending this down. So we can take our time. And I'm not proposing that we do take a lot of time, but what I'm suggesting is we're not going to be able to do everything this year. Um, just wanted to, to let you know that. Um, so approving the resolution ultimately tonight will allow us to move forward with each project on the attached sheet marked with a single asterisk. And I hope everyone can understand the way that we broke things down. I'm happy to answer any questions, of course. So just for a bit more detail, um, North Street Recreation Area, we're proposing to um, add additional playground equipment to complement what was installed in 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, the additional features will increase the footprint of what's existing now by roughly 50%. What's existing is 100 by 60 feet. Uh, what's new would be 60 by 55. Um, part of the reason that we held off on fully expanding was because the picnic shelter area, we were calling to have it be a parking area for the proposed ice arena. So now that we know that's not happening, um, we really want to make North Street Recreation Area and the, and the playground itself uh, awesome. you know, a, real, you know, a real draw for people like it was before. I know that a lot of people were disappointed, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I'm one of them. Um, parking lot um, improvement in front of the picnic shelters and expansion was approved uh, by resolution. I don't recall the number, but that was on March 19th, if you recall. That mm -hmm. was along with our paving budget citywide. Um, new building for North Street Recreation. We worked uh, with Waterville Youth Soccer and folks from the tennis community, including the schools, this offseason on design for a multi-use building to include concessions, storage, and bathrooms. The structure is roughly 24 by 36 and will be located uh, behind the picnic shelters where it was before, if you remember, before mm -hmm. we uh, made improvements. In the same, roughly the same footprint? Yep. Is that about the same size? Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. Yeah. Yep. Um, the, the two picnic shelters will be rebuilt um, to include new concrete pads, support posts, and roofs. Um, at the outdoor pool, the bathhouse upgrades will include floor coating, additional changing stalls, and paint, along with new storage structure for trash, recycling, and cleaning products. That's located over by the slide pool, and it's in disrepair. Um, the bathhouse and pump building will also be re-roofed. Re um, each of the structures requiring roofs on North Street, including the outdoor pool, will be metal roofs, standing seam metal roofs. Uh, we got quotes or estimates for each. Um, and asphalt shingles were roughly 30% less expensive, but we all know, well, I, I hope we know that the, the maintenance and the durability of a metal roof is, it far exceeds asphalt shingles. Mm -hmm. uh, anything south facing or west facing, um, you know, we're getting 12 to 15 years out of the shingles. Mm -hmm. um, so, and for additional projects, um, that we have received competitive quotes from local vendors and contractors, we're proposing to put a playground back at Sterling Street Park off KMD. The former playground was removed, I'm gonna say, 10 or 12 years ago for lead paint, if you recall. Mm -hmm. we're, proposing to add, we're proposing to add a small playground and refurbish the half basketball court. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no other parks in this area. I'd really like to see this happen. They would have to, the closest park playground is um, at Purnell Wrigley Field, mm -hmm. so they would have to cross KMD. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little neighborhood, and I think they deserve a park mm -hmm. back. Um, so after completing playgrounds improvements in 2022, we're proposing to add a slide at Chaplin and a swing at Grove Street. Not a big deal, but after the improvements we made in 2022, we learned from the community and the neighbors that these are things that we're missing from the new playgrounds that we put in. So we'd like to do that. Um, we're also proposing a new picnic shelter for Green Street Park. Um, it would be roughly the same size as the ones at North Street, 24 by 36. Um, in the same design, post and, post and beam with a metal roof. Um, proposed, pro proposed projects, um, and these are the ones with the two asterisks. Uh, these are estimates only. 
Pine Ridge Trails is the big one. Um, if you recall, we had an independent contractor do an assessment for us. Um, the independent contractor was Outdoor Sports in Institute last spring. Uh, the study indicated before solar farm development, we had roughly 7.3 miles of contiguous trails, beautiful trails over there. Very heavily used mountain biking, hiking. Um, so 7.3 miles before um, the development, the development impacted 4.2 miles, so over half. Mm. We'd really like to bring those trails back. They're a huge asset on that side of town. Um, <coughs> budget estimates to rebuild are between 135 and 230. Other improvements, proposed in improvements include Pine Ridge soccer fields, uh, turf and drainage, parking, bathroom facilities, softball field lighting, and dog park upgrades. Um, since I've been here going on 18 years, almost all the maintenance at Pine Ridge has been deferred. We've been doing what we can, but like I said in, in the beginning, it's not often that we have funds like this to improve recreation facilities. Pine Ridge, I look at Pine Ridge as being our other recreation area that's not North Street. Huge potential out there, but it's, it, needs, it needs work. It's in, it's in disrepair. Um, you'll also see that I cite um, just, just a full a full um, citywide ball field assessment. That's another big one. Our ball fields bring in a lot of folks from out of town all summer long. And the backstops are in disrepair. Um, none of the fields have dugouts. Um, the infields are, are in rough shape. There's just a lot more we could do. But I'm, I'm not there yet. We're not there yet as far as making a proposal for the ball fields. But um, you know, with, with what's remaining, roughly a half a million dollars in no time parameters, I think we'll be able to, to assess that um, so that everyone's comfortable. Yeah, so that's what I have. Happy to answer any questions. Council McCormick. I was of the understanding that when they put those solar panels in over at the airport and they damaged all those trails, it was their responsibility to repair the trails. So why are we spending $120,000 for something that somebody else was responsible for? We're not holding the solar people to the fire. You, you know, I wasn't here at the time. Perhaps there was some miscommunication. I did talk to Bill Lee about this issue. Uh, he examined the documents with the, the solar lessees. There is, there is nothing there to provide for funds to uh, rehabilitate these trails. Um, there is one fund the city has that I think was from the sort of timber harvest on the property that's to be used toward the reconstruction of the trails. Matt factors that number in. I think it's just ten thousand dollars, correct? So a small a small piece on the road to, to getting those trails back in order. Um, I, I will just add in the time that I've been here, this has been one of the major chief uh, complaints or, or concerns I've heard from many residents is the destruction of those trails. And what is the city going to do to bring them back? So I, I think this is this is an important priority. A lot of people use those trails. We're not talking about just one small section that was knocked out. We're talking about over four miles that was yeah. knocked out. Um, and so I think it, it should definitely be a priority on this list. Councilor okay. Um First, I want to thank you very much, Matt, for actually bringing this up. Um, so my only question is with the park. Um, um, so I was wondering, with a park, are we going to have like a sensory park with like access um, for children with disability? Because I know the wood chip is really hard for mm -hmm. a child with a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. um, so is that part of the plan to kind of add some accessibility? We've looked into, thank you, that's a great question. Um, it, we'd like to incorporate that into North Street. Uh, so believe it or not, the wood fiber safety chips meet ADA requirements. That's, okay. I know that was hard for me to believe, but it's, that's a fact. <laughs> Um, but that doesn't satisfy the need to make things even more accessible. Um, lots of folks now are using port-in-place rubber mats. Yeah, the rubber mats. Yep. So yeah. that's what we're looking into. It's not figured into the budget, but that's that's why we we you know put a 10% contingency in um, to do the entire area that's wood chipped would be a, would cost yeah. a fortune. So we'll have to you know, we'll have to identify certain areas to do maybe that most heavily used uh, to provide the the best access that we can. Those rubber <coughs> port mats. Yeah. All right. Thank yep. you. Yep. I know it's one that you've heard in the past. Are we going to put a light back on the skateboard park? Uh, there is one now. I didn't see it there. That's why okay. I'm asking. Well, we might need to take another look at that. All right. There is one. Yep. I knew it, was, I knew it had been a... Uh... Thank you. you bet. Any other councils have any? 
questions, comments, concerns from Matt? No, I, I mean, I guess I just have one. I mean, I don't think it's going to be added to this budget, but <laughs> uh, the skate park is very popular at the south end, and we were, even some of the kids were talking about having it one on the north end as well. Um, so maybe that's something we can look on in the future. Well, there's a, there's a lot to consider. You know, yes. after the Well, even before the article came out, I've, I've heard from a lot of people across the community. Um, yes. So that it's certainly something that we consider. Could consider. I can think of dozens of things right now <laughs> that could use it, but these are the ones on this yes. resolution tonight, I think that are, I won't call them low-lying fruit, but they're the ones, the, the most immediate, I yeah. think, needs for the city, um, and then we'll be able to reassess at the end of the season. Yeah, we'll reassess what we were able to get done and what our budget looks like. Thank you. Um, on, on your your vision of the, the ball field assessment, um, I'm sure you remember uh, last year there was uh, quite a bit of discussion around the Matthews Avenue ball field, uh, making sure that that facility meets the needs of all of the residents in that neighborhood, and there was a, a, a variety of opinions around that. Um, is that part of that's like, on top of the list of proposed yet yeah, right we, we we're looking at fencing we're looking at netting um we're looking at hedges to buffer um so that that is another top consideration for the remainder of funds yeah, just yes. to make that ballpark as sustainable as possible right. yeah family friendly uh, neighborhood friendly rather yeah right. and and to keep it as vibrant and used as it is because it's it's used a lot Any other councils? So did I understand that that is on the list, but not on this list? Correct. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. part of the, the 530, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So won't be a priority this year, then? Well, if someone makes it a priority, it will be a priority. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So my other question just concerns the, um, the original um, bond proposal mm -hmm. and, and the remaining funds. Uh, is this, um, does this mean that some of those projects came in under budget or things aren't gonna get done that were originally proposed? What, how do mm -hmm. I Yep, so a summary of that, right, by and large, most all projects came in under budget. Okay, um, great. Let's see, we did, you know, we did spend money at Pine Ridge, um, and I won't say that it was totally unnecessary. We had, uh, you know, a, a fair amount of engineering work done that, mm -hmm. um, that we'll have. Yeah. We had survey work done that we'll have, you know, depending mm -hmm. on what's down the road. Um, there was land acquisition in there, so That's there are right. some good things that came out of Pine Ridge. Mm -hmm. um, but, but right, Councillor Green, most, most all of the items came in under budget. Um, one of the items that was proposed that um, wasn't, I guess it wasn't very well thought through would, was going to be to add a small dog park at uh, Moore Street. Right. The more I thought about that, and the more I thought that that, it, that would not be a good setup at Moore Street. It's too dense, it's too close to the neighbors. We reached out to the neighbors but never heard back and I kind of just thought it probably just best to leave that one alone. Yeah, that was, that, that, I think that's the only thing that we proposed to do other than North Street and Pine Ridge that didn't happen. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I know this is a lot of um, a lot of choices and priorities, mm -hmm. and it's hard mm -hmm. hard to choose. But um, appreciate it. I love Thanks. it. I love talking about recreation. Okay. <laughs> Patty, do we have anybody online that would like to? We do. Make a comment. All right. Mr. Claude Frankie is coming in. Oh, Mr. Claude Frankie. Hi, Claude. Mr. Frankie, can you hear us okay? You're on mute, sir. Oh, okay, now you can hear me. Yes, sir. Thank you. All righty. Well, um, in uh, twenty uh, when twenty in twenty twenty one, uh, the finance committee uh, had proposed a five million dollar bond for street street rebuilding and repair, as, as has had been suggested in that year's council retreat. Yes, um, council then took two and a half million dollars out of the proposed five million dollar bond for road repairs, 
in order to move the North Street soccer fields to make room for an ice skating arena, a project that would have, quote, paved paradise to put up a parking lot, end quote. Note, uh, it takes three schools uh, to field an ice hockey team here uh, in Waterville anymore. With the disappearance of the skating rink plan, the recreation director has devised half a dozen ways to divert this money from its original intention, repairing and paving roads. Uh, it would appear uh, that this council has given up on improving Waterville's roads, which would benefit our local residents and local businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Patty, anyone else online? No. Okay. Any other discussion from the council? All right. Can we move for a vote? Roll call. Show of hands. Resolution. So, yeah. Sorry, I'm a little lost at the moment. Yes, sir. Right. Take your time. <laughs> we are at uh, 81, 20, 24. 81. 81. There we are. Found it. All right. <laughs> uh, this is a resolution. 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 Show of hands. All those in favor? Any opposed? Seven in favor, zero opposed. All right, moving on to resolution 82 2024. Approved contract for a fixed price agreement gasoline fiscal year 25. Move to adopt. Second. Um, any, Matt, you want to provide any context? Oh, sorry. No, you're oh, fine. I'm sorry. You're all right. That was my, that was my good one. That was the swan song. Yeah, just whatever. Yeah, is, I get this it. Is Great, right? Uh, 70 cents cheaper, I think, than what yeah. we have been paying. Mm -hmm. So we're very, we're, we're very happy with this this contract for fiscal year 25. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What what is uh, the the estimated windfall? I'm sorry. What's our estimated windfall? Well, it, it's all city departments, including I guess if I, if I'm understanding your question right, we we budget well. Our bid is based on 65,000 gallons of gasoline. Oh. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, what well, we got? 264.30, I think is the price that it looks like it came in. So, yeah, that's down from 335 from last year. So, great. Um, all right, any discussion? Seeing none, can I get a show of hands? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Okay, now we are moving on to Ordinance 84-2024. Amend the zoning map, 99 Web Road. Move to adopt. Second. Okay. Yeah, one second. All right. trying to get there. Councilor Finch. Um, so to be clear, um, because there's a lot of information that we were presented. This is just on the rezoning of the parcel. That is correct. Okay. That is the only thing that's on the table tonight. Okay. Any discussion? Yes. Can we hear from the city planner? Ann, please. It's been here so patiently. Did you have a question or uh, anything? Do you have I any? Tell you what the vote was: uh, six to zero in favor of recommending the rezoning. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Mr. You touch your mic, Ann. I think Mr. St. Peter would have been here. I th I'm just assuming the reason he is in here is because uh, he didn't realize the meeting was on Wednesday. But anyway. Uh, any other thoughts on it? No. Um, well, I will tell you, if anybody had a chance to read the memo, uh, we looked at a map that was provided by um, Inland Fisheries and Wildlife that shows, it's just a large blob that shows you where the uh, upland sandpipers are. And on that map, we couldn't really tell 
where exactly Mr. St. Peter's solar farm was going to be in relation to that. So uh, one of the planning board members contacted IF&W, and they connected us with um, the website that allowed us to blow up that map. And so we now we could see that the boundary of the area where the sandpipers are is not where his uh, solar farm is proposed to be. He did tell us in the planning board meeting that the sandpipers are on his driveway at his house, which is so south of where he wants to put the solar farm. So I don't believe that inland fisheries actually walk the site. This was made, this map was made from aerial photos. So, and birds move around, so. Yeah. Who, who knows exactly where they are, but um, for me, it's not a concern now that what, what it's going to happen is if the council decides to rezone this property, then Mr. St. Peter will be in touch with, or his consultant will be in uh, touch with Central Maine Power, and Central Maine Power will give him uh, presumably authority to hook in or say, perhaps say, no, you, you, we don't have the capacity on the substation. But Mr. St. Peter told the planning board and also Thomas College previously had told the planning board the same thing, that Central Maine Power won't talk to the developer about a site until the property's rezoned. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the good things about the solar farm district is it says that if the solar farm isn't constructed within a certain number of years, then the zoning reverts, reverts. back to the zoning at the time that you right. uh, rezoned it. Any other questions? Councilor Green? Yeah, I just have a question about the impact of, or how, how the, the request for an easement relates to this rezoning. So I, I believe the way this will work is if you decide to rezone it and Central Maine Power says that this is a good location and that there is capacity on the substation, then Mr. St. Peter will come to the city and ask for an easement across the city's property to hook into three-phase power at the end of Airport Road. And then if the city grants that easement, uh, Mr. St. Peter will bring his project back to the planning board for site plan review. And at that time, or before that time, the developer will do an analysis of the wetlands and look for vernal pools and and actually identify what animals are on that site and and we're told that um, DEP requires that anyway regardless of the fact that our city ordinance requires it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Right. Anyone online that wish to speak? No. Okay. All right. Can we get a? This is. An ordinance, but it's the first one, so this is just a show of hands on this one, or is this a roll call? This is uh, just a show of hands. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Um, we are now at Ordinance 85-2024. So uh, you should have all received an email from me earlier today. Um, there are still some internal discussions happening on this, particularly with uh, the fire department and some life safety uh, code things. So we prefer to table this until our next meeting um, to come back with some language that all departments have had a, a good thorough review on um, and is ready for presentation. I'll motion motion to, to table. table. Second. <laughs> We're motioning to table to the next meeting. Yes. Thank you. Heartbeat. All right. All those in favor? Okay. All right. We are now moving to an executive session um, in pursuant with 1 MRS 405-6A, uh, 1 MRS 405-6D, and 1 MRS 405-6C. Um, this concludes our meeting. We will not come out of here and take any additional votes. Um, so, yeah. There's a motion. So, there we a need a motion to move into executive session. So moved. Second. Thank you. I'm Can sorry. Are we able to address the council or we have to sign up for something? Here. Yeah, that was at the beginning. Oh. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, 
Okay. What is it? I mean, it'll just take two minutes. Council? I have no problem. I don't have an issue. Yeah, yeah, come on. Come on up. Okay. My name is, uh, my name is Chris, and I'm uh, one of the residents at, 50, uh, at 56 Matthews Ave. We just got this letter from uh, Alphonse saying that they're going to uh, start lining our streets for off-street parking. And I'd like to refer the council to the recreational ordinance that said that Sorry about that. That says adequate off-street parking shall be provided for, an inti for the anticipated maximum of attendance for any event. So uh, we kind of have a little cohesive um, people that are next to and abutting that are affected mainly at 56 Matthews Ave. And we don't want lines on our road because that's going to affect our property values. We try and get, uh, try and sell our home and we see there's a ball field with cars park and all of it, and it's not meeting the ordinance. Uh, the other thing I wanted to address is it says that they're going to be certifying the noise ordinance with the code enforcement. And, and I can say that we have access to the certified meter that's required, and the decibel reading is not supposed to exceed 55 during the daytime. Uh, even without the public address system, just the uh, visitors attending um, Neighbors have uh, decibel ordinances exceeding 70, okay? Um, and uh, smaller things are like the lighting glare. That doesn't affect me where I'm at, but I know the people directly there have had comments on that. And I know that it, it's not grandfathered in because I don't think that there's been any permits for a lot of the stuff that's been done at the field. So uh, I'm requesting that until the ordinances and all the ordinances can be met, including figuring out parking, not lining our road with, because that's your ordinances, that uh, you follow the ordinances and if they can't be met, the field needs to shut down and go back to the way it was. Because I was a young kid, I used to play on Averill's field and Matthews Ave. That was just a dirt field people would play on. Now we have artificial turf there, and some states have outlawed artificial turf because artificial turf will put PFAs or forever chemicals in the ground, okay? You have 15 uh, seconds, sir. And uh, so I'll just end with that. I'll say if the ordinances can't be met, um, then I think the field needs to just stop until it can because it's majorly affecting us. And we're cohesive and we're Everybody abutting and next to it, we're all on the same page, including the people on Oakland Street. So thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Okay, we are now, um, just to be real clear, let's, can we just, again, vote to go into executive session, it's get a motion and a second, A motion please. and a second, and after the executive sessions, you will adjourn. Correct. Yes. Okay, all those in favor? Seven in favor, is that correct? And zero yes. opposed? <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.